everybody. As part of this video today, I'm going to be doing some harvesting, but other than that, just showing you what's happening around here, I guess. This is the Romanesco type cauliflower, a variety called Veronica. And first time I've ever grown it, probably never will grow it again. It's interesting, but I've seen several comments online that uh, it's very small. Well, I didn't know how small very small is. And as you can see, this is already starting to break out into separate florets. I suspect that means it's about to bolt and try to bloom. So I'm going to harvest it and see what it tastes like anyway. I have a few more plants if they should happen to produce cauliflower. I guess I'll have to take them when they're, when they're smaller than that, which is not very big. I think I will go back to growing conventional cauliflower next year. A couple of the cauliflower that were started in that winter sowing project that I did have started to produce. I think that's about as large as that head's going to get. It isn't actually flowering yet, but I see some little things turning yellow down in there. So I'll take the main head off and hope that we get to side shoots. I'm sure we will as time goes on, but that's a respectable piece of cauliflower, and I haven't had any fresh in a long time, so I'm looking forward to that. Before I leave the brassica area here, show you a couple of the cabbages. Again, I'm quite sure these were ones that started in the uh, winter sowing project. And this is a red cabbage, red hawk, I believe. And this one here, which I don't know if you got in camera or not. Yeah. This one here is a Savoy. And they're both starting to hit up, making heads. And this is Dipel. I'll show you me dusting Dipel maybe before I finish this video here. But the Dipel is doing a, a great biological job of... Well, not completely eliminating, but that's my fault. We have so many rainstorms, or showers anyway, that wash it off. And if you don't get back out and dust again, you get some of the cabbage moths. But the, the damage is quite minimal. Also, shouldn't mention it, maybe I'll jinx myself, but uh, the moles, or whatever it was that was devouring my brassicas, seem to have moved on to devour something else, I guess. Or the damage seems to have ceased, anyway. It's very hot and humid. And this is what my garden assistant does when I'm out working in the sun. <laughs> That's Angel in the shade of the chestnut tree. Unusual weather for here. We've had quite a long spell of hot and very humid. It doesn't even cool off. To my satisfaction, at night it does cool off a bit, but only going down to around 20 degrees or so at night, which keeps it quite warm in the house. Well, I wanted to show you Dipel. Um, it's the powdered form of Bt, Bacillus thermogensis, and I've used the liquid form for years. Um, you mix it in water and spray it. And last year, watching Pickerick's channel, excellent channel by the way, if you haven't subscribed or watched, go look for Pickerick. He uses Dipel, which is a powdered form. I'm not quite sure what the base the powder might be, but it has the Bacillus thermogensis mixed into it. And that makes it a biological and organic uh, method of controlling the cabbage worm moth, or, or any moth, really. Uh, you just dust it on. This I bought the uh, Dipel in bulk, well, three pounds online. I think I got that at Amazon, and I bought this little duster thing separately. It does an excellent job. After every rainstorm, you have to remember to come back out and, and dust again. This is just a couple of broccoli plants in a container here, which are starting to get tiny little heads of broccoli. So anyway, that'll do until we have another rainstorm. And the worm has to eat a bit of the leaf before it ingests some of the dipel. It doesn't kill on contact. And you get some little fine holes in the leaves, but nothing compared to what you'd get if you didn't spray. So if you're interested in trying something biological, organic, uh, try Dipel or the liquid uh, BT, Bacillus thermogensis. It's a naturally occurring bacillus, and this is just a concentrated version of it. The bacillus is found in the soil. So that is my little Dipel demonstration. I guess I haven't shown the Yakon in a while. This is it in here, if I can get a hand in there to give you an idea how tall that is. Um, 
18 inches, I would say, 20 inches tall, several stems. Still seems to be going quite strong. Some of the bottom leaves are yellowing, but I imagine that's from lack of light. What you see next to it here is potatoes that are dying back. I don't believe it's blight. Uh, I'm going to be harvesting at the end of this uh, video, the last clip, will be harvesting these, which are Charlotte potatoes, uh, seeds that Brendan sent me. And uh, i just zoom to show you what I mean here. That is, uh, I'm not really sure. That's Cara. Okay, that's that's a pot of Cara potatoes there, which, uh, you know, bright green and growing. And there are three other pots like this that are bright green and, and growing. So uh, I don't think that's a blight. I think it's just that the Charlottes have... Uh, finished their growing and the vines are dying back so we're going to find out what's sure, you down can hear there. all the bragging that's going on up at the chicken coop this happens every time one of the girls lays an egg she brags and the rest tell her that you know it's nothing like the one I laid it was much better than that this is my runaway squash patch uh, there were 12 plants in there three varieties four of each and as you can see in the center, there's some sunflowers that are starting to bloom. I don't know if you can make out the difference in the leaves there, but there's also a squash that has climbed to the top of the sunflowers. Uh, so far, I've been able to identify two of the varieties that I've got uh, fruit squash growing on them, and I'll show you those. That's the uh, Georgia Candy Roaster Squash and the Hokkaido Pumpkin, also called Red Curry Squash. Uh, other than that, I have uh, Waltham Butternut, and I haven't been able to locate one yet. It's a thick patch, as you can see, but I try to hand pollinate everything in the squash patch because sometimes the bees don't find the both blossoms, the female and the male, down below the, the big leaves, and I haven't found any Waltham Butternut yet. And I will show you what the male flowers look like on the fourth or uh, third variety there, the Cacoots, which is also called uh, Serpent de Sicilia or Serpent of Sicily. Sicily. Um, white flowers, which surprised me, but I haven't found a female flower there either. So let's have a look a little closer at some of the squash. That's one of the Hokkaido pumpkins or red curry squash. And, oh, well, it's difficult to uh, baseball size, I guess, roughly anyway, maybe a bit smaller than that. It's a, just about the largest one, I guess, that I can see here. Uh, quite a number of them, though, probably eight or ten that I've pollinated. I won't be able to save the seeds to reuse. I'll have to order seeds because I'm sure I'm cross-pollinating. I can't tell where the male blossoms are coming from. I just I pollinate with anything that I can find, just to make sure that it produces a squash. This is a Georgia Candy Roaster Squash. Um, again, small for that variety. It's just, well, it's probably a little over a week since I pollinated the blossom, and that's probably 10 inches long or so. Uh, I'm not sure of the length. I, I have Googled and looked at photographs to see what they look like when they're mature, and that's sort of a yellow now, and they turn a tan brown color when they're mature, and it looks to me like they're probably two feet long, some of them, so I don't know what. This is not Georgia. We don't have the heat that they have in Georgia, so what they will develop into here, I don't know, but I'm very interested in trying them. You can see that selection of lanky stems there with blossom buds on the end of it. That is the Cacoots, or Serpent de Sicilia. Um, very strange. I mean, those things are... Oh, a good two feet, maybe three feet tall. They come up above the foliage, no matter how dense or tall the foliage is. And as I said, I cannot find a female flower anywhere. So hopefully there's one down in there and it's getting pollinated. But I look every day for one, haven't seen one yet. I just finished harvesting the garlic that was in the hoop house. It was just some that I had left over and couldn't stand to throw it away last fall. <clears throat> and I'm not very impressed. Quite small. Uh, maybe only a few cloves in each head, but I'll, I'll use it, that's for sure. I, the variety I will try to remember to put on the screen here. I can't recall what it is. I'll have to check my video from last October or so when it was planted. There's two or three that are this size, which I know I would consider a medium-sized head, I guess, but a lot of them are much smaller. So There's still two beds of it planted out in the garden, so hopefully they grew a little bit better outside than they did in the hoop house. But 
I pulled them out in there because they were definitely 90% dead, the vines on them. Just done a bit of a harvest here, give you an idea of what I'm bringing in today. One of each of the three kinds of beets that I'm growing, and this larger one is Detroit Red, the first time I've grown that, and uh, it's already a good size. The next one to it is called First Crop, and they're usually, well, this size is when I pick them anyway. I don't know if they ever get terribly big or not, but the, I like the Detroit Reds. They're growing quite nicely. And this is the cylindrical. I don't know exactly the name of the variety that I'm using. The first time I've ever grown them. Um, I suspect they're supposed to be larger than that, so anyway, I'll leave them a while longer and see what happens. But I've, I've been eating these three varieties now for at least a couple of weeks, and they, they are doing quite well. And one head of the Salanova lettuce, this one is the oak leaf lettuce. Nice small head, but it's lovely, lovely lettuce. Uh, the two kinds of summer squash, the zucchini, and this one is the parthenocarpic one that uh, um, doesn't require any uh, male blossoms to produce. Each blossom is female. or, or It isn't true, really. There are male blossoms on it, but there don't have to be any male blossoms opened in order for it to produce a fruit, and I've discovered that this variety of zucchini is doing the same thing. The blue-potted peas, there are a lot of pods on the plants. Uh, most of them aren't ready to pick, so I picked a small handful here that I'll just add to a salad. But, uh, those are filled out quite nicely and they're very tender and sweet so they'll go nicely in a salad. Lipstick uh, peppers from Kevin Bradley in Ontario. Uh, two that have just recently ripened. And uh, Jimmy Nardello also from Kevin. I've got three that are ripened there today. Uh, two of my cucumbers. This is the first time I ever had any success growing Boothby's Blonde. I tried a number of times in years past. I don't think I ever got a cucumber out of it. I have several and they're all about that size. So I don't know if that's the size they're supposed to be or not. And this is a standard green one. I don't remember the variety, but there shall be salad and cucumber sandwich for lunch, I guess. Well, let's take a look at a few things inside of the hoop house right now. These are the yard-long beans or asparagus beans. Remember from earlier videos, I kept losing them after they germinated. I have eight plants, and I must say, eight plants have filled in that small space quite nicely anyway. They have, some of them, two or three of them, have reached the top of this trellis, which is, oh, I don't know, five, six feet tall, and uh, they've started sort of hanging over the top. I haven't seen any blossom buds yet, but I'm assuming that will happen here. Nice, healthy-looking plants. These anyway. are the oka melons. As you can see, lots of little yellow flowers. Uh, I keep looking to see if one of them has been, a female one has been pollinated and a melon has started, but I don't see anything yet. But that doesn't mean there isn't one there, I guess. Amongst all of those blossoms somewhere, there must be males and females, and I, I do see bees in here quite often. This is the perpetual chard, which has really grown quite nicely in the... Oh, I don't know, 10 days, 2 weeks that it's been in here. Uh, pretty good sized leaves already. Actually, I could harvest some, but I've already got enough things harvested today for today's meals. And I don't, this stuff wilts very quickly after you harvest it, so I like to harvest it and uh, eat it shortly thereafter. So in the next, sometime in the next couple of days, I'll be trying it. I have eaten it raw, which I'm about to do. It, it, to me, it does have a bit of a flavor like spinach. And it's certainly a much more delicate leaf than other chards are. So I'm interested to see what it's like when it's cooked. No ripe tomatoes yet, but I wanted to show you that there is hope. <laughs> There's two or three in that cluster that are starting to turn orange. So within the next week to ten days, I'll have my first ripe tomatoes. And that is the uh, determinant uh, parthenocarpic variety that doesn't require any male blossoms. Same as that uh, summer squash to produce, and I'm getting very nice sized clusters off of that. Almost every blossom is producing a fruit, so if I like the flavor of that, that is definitely going to be one that's going to be grown again here in another year or two. Here goes nothing, the first potato reveal of the year. I only have five, because I only planted five pots like this, unless I show a video of me uh, 
reaching around under sawdust to see what I can find. That's been fun. I've been pulling Lindsay Delicatess. You have to go out and feel around under the sawdust to see what's there. This had two Charlotte seed potatoes in it. And it's a 70 or 75 liter container uh, with just the bought and commercial compost that I use, potting mix, and a handful or two of an organic uh, fertilizer, which never tells you what it is here. It just says it's organic, but it smells to me like it's blood, fish, and bone. And uh, that's all that's been in this. in except ants. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but the bottom of it is crawling with ants. They are small, and I don't have any idea what a charlotte is supposed to look like, I guess. I'll make it get big out of the way and just move over here to the side. Small, but so far plentiful. Once again, I have a hen singing in the background. <laughs> it goes on all day here. Very pleased with Angel, the dog, who is lying right beside the wheelbarrow here. She's not bothering the hens at all. I go out in the evening, they've been out for a while, and I've left their gate open, and their door to the hen house is open, and she goes in with me and watches me gather eggs and isn't bothering them. Down in my basement, if you've watched some of my other videos, I have uh, 20 young quail. She comes down there with me and uh, stands at the edge of the brooder and watches the quail. A very well-behaved dog around the livestock, anyway. Very well-behaved, period. I shouldn't say around the livestock, anyway. I'm I am absolutely amazed with her. I haven't had her quite five weeks yet, and I just uh, can't get over how well she behaves. This is full of ants. Well, that had anything to do with it dying off earlier or not? I don't know. Tiny little ants, whatever the variety is, and they're not getting bitten, so that's good. thoroughly later on. I do believe that's it. And I will weigh these when I get them up at the house. I don't have scales that I bring out with me. I have a set of kitchen scales that uh, I'll weigh them on, but there's no great amount there. Very small. I'd be surprised why well, I know there's not a kilo. 800 grams or so maybe, but uh, we will know. I will weigh them and I'll put the weight, as I said, on the screen here. Well, thank you very much for staying with me for the potato reveal, and that concludes this week's video.